Hello Unity developers, in this video I am showing you how to use the destruction post process of the voxel modifier version 2. So this video is the part 2 of the voxel modifier version 2 tutorial series. And for this video I have here prepared a small sample scene where you can see here some mountains and they are snow covered. And if I paint here now. You can see here that material is removed and at the same time those particle effects will spawn and you can see that they will roll downhill into the valley here. So this is basically an avalanche. Here you can see how they spawned and in this video I am showing you how this is set up and what you can do with it. So let's go back to edit mode and here I have a, a sample scene which will also be included in the next update. This sample contains the prefab of the object which should be spawned when material is removed. So this is the avalanche prefab here. It is simpler, simply a sphere. is a particular system here. Here we have the voxel engine and the world algorithms to create the Terra. Here we have the modifier. Initially, usually you have here no post process. I ha this is quite simple. I have here, I can remove material, I can add material. And if I hit play now, you can see here nothing is spawned because here is no post process. So in order to activate the destruction post process, I click here on plus and add here the destruction here. Also, we have assigned here a destruction prefab. I am assigning you now for you to see this destruction prefab here, the default one. And if I now hit play, you can see here that cubes are spawned. We have here two options. If I remove material now, you can see here that I am removing material and they are even spawned in the air basically. Nah? Because if I have here require voxel data disabled, basically it assumes that wherever you are modifying stuff basically uh, it will uh, create those cubes. So the, for higher precision I recommend to have required voxel data true. So what it does now basically it, it checks which voxel data was before and which voxel data was afterwards and the difference basically is used to calculate uh, how the objects should be spawned. In this case, if I can also define here a minimum material ID so only this on the surface the stuff is created. So now let's go back and assign the avalanche prefab. And now we have, now we have here uh, everything set up. So you have the normal modifier. You can define here the radius as usual the initial ID. And for safety, I recommend to to start with a low initial ID because otherwise you will spawn a lot many many objects here. You can see here how the, the stuff is now rolling downward, downhill. Here you can see it also. So now what do we have here uh, regarding the parameters? Here we have the required spawn material. The lower this, this value here is basically the more objects will spawn. 
Here you have a removed material counter which, which goes up when you remove material. You can see here it goes up and if it is greater than the required spawn material, I can show it to you like this, then one object is spawned. So now I show you uh, what happens if you if you if you have here a very small value basically. It's very you have to be careful because it will spawn so many objects that you may get Unity to freeze because it can't handle ten thousand objects. So for that I show you another thing. Uh, here you have the option to add an attachment. Uh, if I click here mesh piece attachment I can here add some some effect basically uh, which is applied on the created objects and for example I have here a decay script so this here basically uh, says okay it should be, it, the, the object should be removed up bit after between three and five seconds. Let's see if uh, I need to assign it. Let's assign it. Oh. And now the material. You can see here after three seconds the material disappears. Uh, this is happens. I think three seconds is now. Is not enough. I would say between ten and fifteen. Then they uh, they uh, they have enough time to to roll downhill into the valley. And when they are down in the valley, basically they disappear. I can see how they disappear. So, but for now, uh, let's save those values here. And I show you now what hap what will happen if you make this value very small, basically. But for that I say DK time just 10, 1 or 2 seconds. And now I... Let's lower the value slowly. I bet I saved before. Now let's just let's let's risk it. <laughs> let's risk it. Okay. One, two. Just tell you to see what happens if you make this value quite low. Ah, this is you can see here how many objects is, will will be spawned here, and this is not even high. We have here, we have here uh, the in the in the shape module here initial ID ten. So we are slowly removing material. If I put this to twenty, basically it doubles the amount of stuff which will spawn. You see. And if we can, if, if we check the frame rate, let's give it a try. Let's let's increase it at least. The yeah, you can see how it rolls downhill. I mean, it's a it's a. You can see here even that the the frame rate can can handle this. It's incredible that the engine can do that. That this this now it, now it goes down and <laughs> now it, it's just to slow down. But as soon as the material is removed, it is back. Probably the 
I'm not sure probably the engine also the physics is the physics engine is has such a high efficiency that it supports stuff like that. Just uh, uh, let's we can and uh, we can assign here this one. Where is it? Uh, this destruction so just for you to see how many objects this. This is what you get now. I mean, look, the frame rate is even, it, it, it can sustain it. It can, the, the engine, the physics engine, it, it, I mean, the, the, the thing which slows down the frame rate is mainly the GPU because of the particles which had to be rendered. But here, those uh, cubes here have no particle effects on it. So they are simplest 3D meshes. And you can see here how they roll downhill. I think what I can, what I could try now, uh, maybe, maybe let's see what's happened if we make the set. Ah, this happens when you put it to ten. Bang. <laughs> yeah, it 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 acts that many materials. This is this is what happens. <laughs> oh, <holy shit. laughs> I mean, look, it, it, it even it can handle that. Uh, now it goes down. It's crazy. I mean, as soon as the most important thing is that uh, that the materials are that you have the decay here, so that the, the stuff disappears after a while. Now let's let's go to the to the craziest. Let's try one. Let's try one. What's happening? What's happening? Yeah, even more, much, even more. Yeah, now the daughter. You can see how. <laughs> it works. It even works. Basically, I never expected that. Small material one, it's super silly to have to do that. But probably if the if the items itself are cheap, then it's no problem. Let's try here for the 100 to so remove more material. I can see the the stuff stuff slowly the the terrain slowly turning into cubes. And also, what you see is because it requires the previous material, the previous voxel terrain, if I go over it basically, it, it, it has some delay basically. If I disable require voxel data, it goes immediately, but at least I must have the, the minimum ID I need to have. The minimum ID must be lower than the initial ID here, otherwise you won't spawn, it won't spawn cubes. But this also works quite nice. And you can see here that it goes quite, it goes quite fast. And this is here now that the problem, if you, if you don't use the previous voxel data, you can see here, I, I am painting above the cubes and I can spawn cubes on cubes basically. And this is why you need the required voxel data enabled. What you have to do basically here is to to have the cubes should have a different layer and so that the ray caster doesn't hit those cubes basically. Because here you can see I can 
remove material because now even if I if I remove for example a small fraction it counts as removed because it doesn't know what previous what's the previous terra because the require voxel data is disabled if I have this text basically you can see here I can't I can't paint into that onto the cubes but of course it has some delay because of the previous calculations required So I hope you like this video. You have seen now the destruction post process. It's quite simple. Add the destruction. Define the destruction prefab. I recommend that you also add here the decay attachment. So the blocks, the uh, the, the content disappears after a while. Otherwise, you it will fill up and you have more and more objects. And unexpectedly, even if you have here a very small numbers for the required spawn material, it for some reason yes, Unity can support such a high amount of objects. I never expected that. We have uh, frame rate drops when we put that to ten and a uh, one, which is already quite high. So be careful when playing around with those values. Start with higher values here and slowly reduce the values so the amount of stuff you create when removing terra is satisfying ideally not too much uh, but also not too less so so i recommend 1000 is ideal yeah and see you next time bye bye